Hey, Mr. Kaczynski here, working through IXL's Algebra 1 skills. Section double B, we're on the second skill now. In the first skill, we identified characteristics of quadratic functions looking at their graphs. Now we're going to look at the equations and identify those same characteristics, these over here. First thing is that the general form of a quadratic equation is f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We have to get it in that form, and once we have it in that form, it's easy to identify these characteristics. Well, not that easy all the time, but the y-intercept definitely is. It's just that c value, that value hanging off the end. Kind of like in y equals mx plus b form of linear equation, it's just the b. All right, so axis of symmetry is found by taking the opposite of the b value, the opposite of the coefficient of the middle term, and dividing by 2 times a, double the coefficient of the first term. So x equals negative b over 2a, that'll be your axis of symmetry. The maximum or minimum value will be found when we take that value and plug it back into the function and get an output. So if this is our input, our minimum or maximum value is that output. And then our vertex is a combination of those. The x value is the axis of symmetry, the x, where the axis of symmetry crosses through, that x value. And the um, y value is the maximum or minimum value. So a lot of stuff just revolves around this negative b over 2a. So that's an important equation that we have to memorize here. All right, the c value, though, is our y-intercept. So the y-intercept is just that value right there, if there is one. If there isn't, then our y-intercept would be 0. Um, so it's the constants, the value that's not being multiplied by x or x squared. So there's another one, negative 4. Again, it can be 0 if there's nothing there. And yes, IXL does want uh, fractions on this skill. All right, so y-intercept, easy enough. Let's move on to the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry is negative b over 2a. So we're going to do the opposite of b, which is 3, over 2 times a, which is negative 1. That's that value in front of the x squared. It's a negative sign in front of the x squared, so it's negative 1. So that's going to give us negative 3 over negative 2, also known as positive 3 over positive 2. So our axis of symmetry is x equals 3 over 2. Yes, you do need to write the x equals because you're being asked for the equation of the axis of symmetry. All right, let's do it again here. This time it's x equals negative b over 2a, as always. And our b value is 0. Well, that makes things zero or easy, sorry, um, because anytime your b value is zero, um, you're going to end up with an axis of symmetry at x equals zero. Now, if your a value is zero, you can't divide by zero, and that's because you don't have a quadratic equation. So. All right, now we're finding maximum and minimum values. But the first thing we have to do there is find that x value that the axis of symmetry runs through. So again, it's going to be negative b over 2a. This time, negative b would be the opposite of negative 4 over 2 times a. a is negative 10. So that will give us 4 over negative 10, also known as... Um, I'm sorry, 4 over negative 20, that makes more sense, which is negative 1 fifth. So that's our x value. Now we need to figure out the y value. So what we do is we take the equation, we plug that negative 1 fifth into the equation. So negative 10 times negative 1 fifth squared minus 4 times negative 1 fifth plus 5. If you're good with a calculator, now's a good time to maybe use it and you can use some tricks and use the um, like convert to a fraction uh, function. So here we go though. Let's continue on with this. Um, so negative 10 times negative 1 fifth squared would be 1 25th plus 4 fifths plus 5, 
negative 10 times 125th. How about we simplify that a little bit, like 5 goes into that 10 twice, 5 goes into that uh, 5 times, so negative 2 fifths plus 4 fifths, and we'll even turn the 5 into 25 fifths. So negative 2 plus 4 is 2, uh, and 2 plus 25 is 27. 27 fifths, that would be our maximum value. So find the x value using negative b over 2a, and then plug that value into the equation. All right, let's do it again. This time, x equals negative b. b is 1, so negative 1 over 2 times a. a is 1, so 2. So there's our x value. We're going to plug that value into the equation. y equals negative 1 half squared plus negative 1 half minus 9. So that gives us 1 fourth minus 1 half. I'm going to make it 2 fourths. Uh, minus 9. I'm going to make that 36 fourths. And so 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 minus 36 is negative 37. Negative 37 fourths is our minimum value. That's the lowest the parabola ever gets to. All right, and one more, which is basically a combination of the last two things, <clears throat> and that is finding the vertex. So again, the first thing we got to do is find the x value of the vertex. We're going to do negative b, b is 4, over 2 times a, a is 1, and that gives us that the x value of the vertex is negative 2. Then we're going to find the maximum value. So it'll be y equals that negative 2 squared, plus 4 times that negative 2. So that's going to be 4 minus 8, which is negative 4. So our vertex is negative 2, negative 4. The x value of the vertex, or the x value of the axis of symmetry, and then the value we get as an output when we plug negative 2 in. One more. And again, we're going to find the vertex here. So the first thing we're going to use is um, x equals negative b over 2a. So we're going to plug that those values in, 4 for b and 1 for a, if my computer would let me. There we go. So negative 6 over 2 times negative 4, which is negative 8. That gives us 3 fourths. So this will be a little bit tougher for us. y equals negative 4 times 3 fourths squared plus 6 times 3 fourths. So negative 4 times 9 sixteenths plus, oh, let's call it 18 fourths. I think that's going to work out good for us. So we can simplify this a little bit and make it... Uh, let's see, 4 goes into that once, 4 goes into that 4 times, so that'll give us negative 9 fourths plus 18 fourths, which of course is 9 fourths, and then we've got our vertex. So it's that 3 fourths that we plugged into the equation, and the 9 fourths that we got as an output when we plugged 3 fourths in. All right. So that all those examples should help you with um, skill two of section double B in quadratic equations. That's IXL's algebra one skills. Uh, good luck. Negative B over two A.